Hello there, this is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and today we're going to talk about creating international fonts. Now, I'm going to go on the theory that experts don't need to watch a tutorial on this, so we're going to do the non-expert version of this tutorial. Let's say you were given an assignment to create a Hebrew font, and you knew nothing about what you're doing. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that your best bet is to open up Arial, which has several languages in it, and I scroll down here to the Hebrew range and what I would do would be to just hold down the mouse and drag to a series of uh, Hebrew characters then I would copy those I'd go get me a new empty font and then I would just paste them anywhere so it just so happens that photographer uh, defaults to the decimal 65 which is the letter A. You'll notice here that the name of this character is the letter A and that isn't going to work for Hebrew. Keep in mind that the international keyboard driver uh, uses Unicode to find the character so it doesn't care if I were to put this Hebrew character here or here or where I put it. So just for the sake of simplicity I'm going to leave it there. But we still have a problem the name of the character is the letter A. Now what I've done is I've gone into character map on the uh, accessories control panel and found out that this letter right here is called the Aleph. So what I'm going to do is highlight it. I go to element and selection info and I can type that name into this box. Now since I know the name from the name I can get the Unicode number. 05D0. So now that character there is properly defined and you'll see that its name has been changed to Aleph. Now you would just do that with all the Hebrew characters, getting them properly defined, and then the, the uh, Unicode keyboard driver will understand what to do with that font. Okay, so now that you've got all your characters defined, you would go to Element Font Info. Uh, as far as your encoding, you would want to use Hebrew encoding. So I'm going to come down here and pick Microsoft Windows 1255 Hebrew. And then I would need to give the font a name. So I'm going to go to the Names tab. And I'm going to name the font My Hebrew, for lack of a better name. And then all I'd have to do is generate the font. and then I would install the font and I'm ready to go okay now the next problem that we're going to face is that we need to install a, a keyboard driver that uh, will understand what to do with this font so you'll notice down on the taskbar here there is something called the keyboard switcher mine is set to English right now so if I click on the EN you'll see that I have Arabic, English, Hebrew, and French installed. All I have to do is switch to Hebrew when I want to type in Hebrew, but I want to show you how I got that installed first. What I did is I went to Start button and Control Panel. Now I'm on Windows 7, and on Windows 7 and the Control Panel is called Region and Language. Now it's worded a little differently on various versions of Windows. I go into the International Keyboard Control Panel and select Keyboards and Languages, Change Keyboards, and you see here that I can add various keyboards. But I've selected Hebrew here, and I want to show you something that you have to pay attention to. Notice this prompt up here says Default Input Language. Now, if you're not careful, you could have a Hebrew keyboard installed, but your input could be English. If this says English here, and the keyboard switcher says Hebrew, then the font will type from left to right. But with Hebrew, you want to type from right to left. So I've had to go in here and set my default for my Hebrew keyboard driver as right to left. That's called a bi or bi-directional font. Okay, so 
now that I've got that set up uh, correctly, I'm going to go ahead and get out of the uh, control panel. And since I've got my font installed, all I need to do now is go to Microsoft Word. And you'll see that when I type, and I select my font, My Hebrew, and start typing. And you'll see that when I select the My Hebrew font and type Aleph, I'll see the Aleph character. By the way, if you're like me and you know uh, practically nothing about Hebrew or any other language, what you can do is in the control panel here, you can click on the, the word Hebrew here and get a little preview of what the Hebrew keyboard should look like. So this is how I know that if I go five characters over from the tab key, there's the Aleph. And that's the only way I would know how to get what I'm typing. That's about it for a quick start tutorial on international fonts, but this topic is so important and so touchy that I wanted to make sure that you knew where to get further help. So if we were to go to fontlab.com and then we come down here to the photographer section and click on support, you're going to see the famous photographer techno collection, which is my life's work. And if you click on that, you're going to get a PDF, which has a list of, if you search for the word international, it's going to have a list of uh, all kinds of international keyboard layouts and uh, further details. One last thing I think we better mention is when I open Arial and borrow the Hebrew characters from it, I'm not telling our users to steal a copyrighted uh, font and uh, put it in Fontarfer and generate it with a different name and go out there and sell it as their own font. That is completely forbidden. All right. As we see here on the element menu under Font Info and Licensing, Arial is a copyrighted font. So you, you don't want to just, I didn't mean to imply that you just go steal the characters from Arial and use them in your font. Um, of course, what you want to do is to draw your own Hebrew characters and uh, what we were doing here is just showing you how to get the character definitions set up correctly for illustration purposes. Okay, so now with that out of the way, that's uh, uh, about all there is to get you started on creating international fonts. What you want to do is review those Fontara for Tech Notes for more details as well as your Fontara for User Manual. Thanks for watching the Fontographer tutorial series and we'll see you next time.